Hey there, this is Sensei Jenny, your learning buddy. This time, let's learn about the electromagnetic spectrum and the nature and practical application of its component. Electromagnetic spectrum is a continuum of electromagnetic waves arranged according to frequency and wavelength. It is a gradual progression from the waves of the lowest frequencies to the waves of highest frequencies. It consists of radio wave, microwave, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays. They are arranged according to their frequency and wavelength. Radio waves has the longest wavelength in the electromagnetic spectrum. They are produced by making electrons vibrate in an antenna. Radio waves has frequencies as high as 300 gigahertz to as low as 30 hertz. At 300 gigahertz, the corresponding wavelength is 1 millimeter. At 30 hertz, the corresponding wavelength is 10 kilometer. The whole region of radio wave is divided into smaller regions or wave bands. Each wave band is allocated by law to a specific radio service. From extremely low frequency to super high frequency, which is utilized by satellite communication, or even the extremely high frequency that is about 30 to 300 gigahertz. Television broadcasting is on 300 megahertz to 3 gigahertz in ultra high frequency. Various frequencies of radio waves are used for television, AM and FM radio broadcast, military communications, mobile phones, ham radio, wireless computer networks, and numerous other communications applications. Most radio waves pass freely through Earth's atmosphere. Microwave is a form of electromagnetic radiation with wavelengths ranging about 1 meter to 1 millimeter corresponding to frequencies between 300 megahertz and 300 gigahertz respectively. Microwaves are widely used in modern technology, for example in point-to-point -point communication links, wireless networks, microwave radio relay networks, radar, satellite, and spacecraft communication, medical diathermy and cancer treatment, remote sensing, radio astronomy, particle accelerators, spectroscopy, and industrial processes. Infrared radiation, that portion of the electromagnetic spectrum that extends from the long wavelength or red end of the visible light range to the microwave range. Most of the radiation emitted by a moderately heated surface is infrared. It forms a continuous spectrum. The heat that we feel from sunlight, a fire, a radiator, or a warm sidewalk is infrared. It can be detected with the use of special devices such as night vision goggles. Infrared light is used by electrical heaters, cookers for cooking food, short-range communication like remote controls, optical fibers, security systems, and thermal imaging cameras which detect people in the dark. Generally, visible light is defined as the wavelengths that are visible to most human eyes. Electromagnetic radiation in this range of wavelength is called visible light or simply light. A typical human eye will respond to wavelengths from about 380 to about 750 nanometers. Electromagnetic light energy is everywhere, but very little of it can actually be seen by the human eye. It is used in photography and illumination. It is also used in fiber optic communications where coded pulses of light travel through glass fibers from a source to a receiver. Aside from sight, there are other important uses for visible light. We concentrate visible light to make lasers to use in everything from surgery to CD players to laser pointers. Visible light waves also make our TV, computer, and cell phone screens work. Ultraviolet is a form of electromagnetic radiation with a wavelength from 10 nanometer to 400 nanometer, shorter than that of visible light but longer than X-rays. UV radiation is present in sunlight and constitute about 10% of the total electromagnetic radiation output from the sun. 
Some UV radiation is essential to the body as it stimulates the production of vitamin D. It is used for killing bacteria, creating fluorescent effects, curing inks and resins, phototherapy and stun tanning, detecting forged banknotes in shops, hardening some types of dental fillings. But too much of that can cause cancer and blindness in humans. An X-ray, or much less commonly known as X-radiation, is a penetrating form of high-energy electromagnetic radiation. Most X-rays have a wavelength ranging from 10 picometers to 10 nanometers, corresponding to frequencies in the range of 30 petahertz to 30 exahertz, and energies in the range of 124 electron volts to 124 kilo electron volts. The most familiar use of x-ray is checking for fractures, but x-rays are also used in other ways. For example, chest x-rays can spot pneumonia. Mammograms use x-rays to look for breast cancer. When you have an x-ray, you may wear a lead apron to protect certain parts of your body. Airport security used x-rays to scan the luggages or even humans. X-rays are also used in revealing counterfeit art. Now, how much do you remember about Bruce Banner, The Incredible Hook? Now, let's set aside Hook first and let's discuss gamma rays. A gamma ray, also known as gamma radiation, is a penetrating form of electromagnetic radiation arising from the radioactive decay of atomic nuclei. It consists of the shortest wavelength electromagnetic waves and so imparts the highest photon energy. They are produced by the hottest and most energetic objects in the universe, such as neutron stars and pulsars, supernova explosions and regions around black holes. Gamma rays are used in medicine, particularly in radiotherapy, industry, sterilization and disinfection, and nuclear industry. Shielding against gamma rays is essential because they can cause diseases to skin or blood, eye disorders, and cancers. Now let's do some incredible hooking with gamma rays. These are the practical applications. 1. A sterilized medical equipment. Then 2. A sterilized food or irradiated food used as tracers in medicine, radiotherapy, and oncology to kill cancer cells and gamma ray astronomy. Gamma rays have the smallest wavelengths and the most energy of any wave in the electromagnetic spectrum. They are produced by the hottest and most energetic objects in the universe such as neutron stars and pulsars, supernova explosions and regions around the black holes. The Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope is a NASA spacecraft. It is in space studying the most powerful sources of radiation in the universe. Because of its great penetrating ability, gamma rays can cause serious illness. However, when used in controlled condition, gamma rays is useful in cancer treatment. It can kill cancer cells. For example, cobalt-60 has been used for cancer treatment. It is radioactive and unstable. That is why it will undergo a radioactive decay until it will reach to its stable isotope nickel-60 plus the production of electron antineutrino. It decays through beta and gamma emissions into non-radioactive nickel-60, but most of the radiations emitted upon disintegration is gamma radiation. Cobalt-60 produced gamma rays with energies of 1.173 mega electron volt and 1.332 mega electron volt. Another example is cesium-137. It is radioactive again and it will disintegrate until it reaches into its stable isotope barium-137. Upon disintegration, it produces a beta emission about 511 kilo electron volts about 94 percent and the gamma emission is about 662 kilo electron volt 
And now let's go back to Hook. Gamma Ray's her blame for making Bruce Banner the incredible Hook. A gamma ray packs at least 10,000 times more energy than a visible light ray. Unlike Incredible Hulk, gamma rays are not green. Lying as they do beyond the visible spectrum, gamma rays have no color at all. Banner tests the serum and the gamma radiation combination on himself. The details in the story change on each retelling, but the plot generally follows the same line. The hook is created due to the exposure to gamma rays. Now here's the question, could a man actually be changed to super strong hook by gamma ray exposure? The answer is, not a chance, no way. The rays would totally kill him or destroy him. Now here's the questions for my students. What is the most useful part of electromagnetic spectrum and why? And second question, explain why certain orientations of a broadcast television antenna give better reception than others for a particular station.